In this video, I will be showing how I make large batches of 10 to 12 loaves of bread. The recipe I'll be using is my super soft fresh mill whole wheat recipe. Um, I will link it below, but you can also find the recipe video on my channel. I always start with milling my grain. I'm milling about 35 cups of grain. While that's milling, I measure out my water, 12 and a half cups of water. And you can see I still have some grain off to the side there because my Nutri-Mill can only do about 2,400 grams of grain. And on this day, I needed to mill 4,350 grams. Now I'm pouring in about one and a third cup of olive oil, one and a half teaspoons of vitamin C powder. I don't always do this, but this does help to preserve the bread for longer. Eighty grams of sunflower lecithin. Here I'm adding the first half of the flour. I had to mill it in two rounds because the Nutrimill Classic can only hold so much. So I'm also going to go ahead and mill the other half of my grain. In total, I'm milling 4,350 grams of hard white wheat. It's actually a mix of hard white, hard red, and rye. I change up my wheat berries often. Sometimes I'll do all hard white or all hard red. Sometimes I'll add in rye, sometimes I won't. It's really versatile. Now I'm adding in the rest of my flour and as you can see, this mixer bowl is filled to the top. The mixer that I use for my large batches is called the FAMOG IM10. It has a capacity of, I believe, 20 pounds of dough, and I am maxing it out today. Now that all of my flour is in my mixer bowl, I'm gonna go ahead and put the mixer bowl on. And once I did that, I realized I forgot my sweetener. Now I would usually use honey, but I was too low on honey. So here I'm using coconut sugar. This is 348 grams of coconut sugar, and I'm just measuring it like this on the scale because at this point, the mixer is way too heavy to put it back on the scale. As you can see, all of the ingredients go all the way to the top of the mixer bowl. And when I mix like this, I have to start off slow so that I don't get flour flying everywhere. This mixer is a workhorse. It does not struggle with anything that I put in it, even when it is filled to the max with a thick, a whole grain, fresh milled flour dough. And you can see here the flour that I had just mentioned, how the flour is starting to go up in the air, but as soon as it starts to get mixed in and incorporated more with the water, then that problem goes away. Now I'm gonna let this mix for just a few minutes, not really trying to develop gluten, but just want the flour to be fully incorporated so it can sit and rest and soak up all of the liquids in the flour. And it's starting to look like it's mixed pretty well here. So I just go ahead and turn my mixer off and cover it with a damp cloth. Once it's done resting, I add in my salt and my yeast. I'm using about 19 teaspoons of salt and about 12 and a half teaspoons of yeast. I let this knead for about 10 minutes. This batch of dough is 8,200 grams. With this, I could make 12 9 inch loaves or 8 13 inch loaves. On this particular day, I am doing six nine inch loaves and four 13 inch loaves. Now that it's done kneading, I'm going to take it out of the bowl. It may not look like it, but this dough is very, very heavy. It's about, the dough itself is about 18 pounds and this mixer bowl is heavy also. I'm not sure how much the mixer bowl weighs, but I would say that this is over 20 pounds that I'm working with here. I would typically leave my dough in the bowl to rise, but because this is so much dough, 
it would immediately overflow the bowl so i'm gonna dump it out onto a lightly oiled work surface and i have a big 22 liter i think it is costco bucket that i'm going to be using um, to put the dough in for it to rise this dough is not a very wet dough it's very easy to work with but it surprisingly produces a very soft loaf of bread even though the hydration is not very high but it's also very beginner friendly because it is very easy to work with i'm attempting to get this into a nice neat ball it is a bit difficult because it is very heavy but i want to make sure that it has good gluten structure so I'm trying to see here, I'm going to do a, a window pane test here in a moment just to ensure that the gluten is well developed. I usually don't do a window pane test, but I wanted to show you that after just 10 minutes of kneading, the gluten is very well developed. Um, even in my KitchenAid mixer, usually 10 minutes does the trick. This could very easily vary from person to person depending on many factors like the mixer that you're using or the kind of grain that you're using. So just take that with a grain of salt. Here's the large Costco uh, container that I had mentioned. So I lightly oiled it and put my dough in. Here is a picture of my dough. Oh, and the container is 22 quarts, not 22 liters. And here's the dough after it's risen, it is popping out of the container. I deflated my dough and now I'm dumping it out of the container. Now it's time to divide the dough and weigh it. I do like for mine to all be uniform weights. For my six nine inch loaves, I'm making those 675 grams each. I make them a little bit smaller than my traditional loaves only because when I do them full size, they rise and they touch the top of my heating element in my oven. And so I do have to keep them a little bit smaller than usual so that I can fit all 10 loaves in the oven at one time. And I will show a picture of how I fit all 10 loaves in the oven. For the 13 inch loaves, I believe those were around a thousand grams. When I'm weighing my loaves, I like to also shape them into neat balls. This helps to shape the loaves into logs a lot easier. I'm usually not concerned about things being perfect when it comes to baking, but for me it's really important that each loaf of bread is an equal weight because when I'm baking 10 loaves, if the loaves rise too high, they will touch the top of my oven. So if I have a, lo a loaf that's really large and then a loaf that's really small, the large loaf will rise and touch the top because I do use the top and the bottom of my oven when I bake the 10 loaves at one time. So this is the last of the nine inch loaves um, that I'm about, that I just shaped here. So these six loaves are going, these, I'm sorry, these six dough balls are going to be my nine inch loaves. And now I am going to weigh out and divide for my 13 inch loaves. And again, my 13 inch loaves were about 1,004 grams each. Also, I really enjoy this scale that I'm using. Um, I purchased it from Amazon. I believe it's called the Baker's Math Kitchen Scale um, by My Weight. It goes up to 8,000 grams and this top plate is easily removable to be washed. I don't use the Baker's Math on it. I do all of my baking math on my phone but it's just a really reliable scale. I'm almost done weighing out my 13 inch loaves. Now I would usually keep my loaves covered with a damp cloth, but because I'm recording this video, I'm just leaving them out so that you can see what I'm doing. But I would typically keep them covered with a damp cloth just so that it doesn't dry out. But I'm moving pretty quickly here, so I didn't have any issues. So here are my nine inch pans. I'm gonna do my nine inch loaves first. And I just take all of the pans and put them on a cookie sheet. That way it makes it easier to move the pans around. And as you can see here, I'm not putting a whole lot of effort into shaping these loaves. I actually have my baby strapped to me and he was starting to get fussy. So 
I just figured progress over perfection. Let's just get these loaves into the tins. And they actually came out very good, um, even despite my shaping. Um, I would you ideally like to let these loaves rest a little bit so that the gluten could relax and that would make it a lot easier to shape. But on this day, I didn't have the time, so I just had to go straight into shaping it. But I would usually allow it to rest for about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, covered with the damp cloth before I started shaping um, and so you can see here I just flip the dough over and I flatten it out and then roll it up into a log and just try to pinch all of the seams shut and I try to make sure that the log is as even as possible so that when the loaf rises I'll have a nice even flat top on each loaf and also when I'm shaping I try to make sure that I don't allow the dough to tear and that's another reason why it's good to let the dough rest for a few minutes so that it doesn't tear while you're shaping it when i shape i always put the smooth side of the dough down on the table because that is going to be the top of your loaf and you want a nice smooth top of your loaf so i'm moving quick here again because i had to this time but typically I would put a little bit more attention into how I'm shaping because depending on how you shape your loaves, you can get holes um, in your loaf that has happened to me before. The bread is still fine, it, it's still edible, but it can happen. Also to help to prevent holes from any air bubbles, I go ahead and push it down when I put it in the pan. That way it'll help to get out any air bubbles. Now that I have my six nine inch loaves shaped, I covered that with the damp cloth and I put my four loaves on top of that. This is just for shaping purposes. I'm not going to allow it to rise this way, but because I'm working in a, a small table, I'm doing it like this just for now. And so now I'm working on my 13 inch loaves and I'm shaping those pretty similar to how I shaped the nine inch loaves. Putting the loaf pans on these cookie sheets makes it so much easier to move them around so that I'm not having to move 10 individual loaf pans every single time I want to transport the loaves. For the 13 inch loaves, I did use this little double sided rolling pin because the dough again was, was still very tight from being shaped into a ball and the little rolling pin was very helpful for some of the tighter loaves. The other tool that I'm working with here that you'll see with the little black candle is my bench scraper and I'm using this just to create a little bit more tension and make sure that my loaf is nice and tight. This does help um, the loaf to rise better in the oven when it is nice and tight. And so I just use the bench scraper by holding it on one side of the loaf and then pulling it towards myself and this makes sure that the loaf is nice and taut now that i finally got all 10 of those loaves shaped i am covering the loaves with a damp cloth pressing down on them to just press out any air bubbles and now i'm going to go ahead and separate them because i don't want them to rise stacked like that um, otherwise they would not be able to rise fully so here are all 10 loaves And here are the loaves after they have fully risen. Here is a picture of the loaves in my oven. At the bottom, I have the four 13 inch loaves and at the top, I have the six nine inch loaves. And you can see here why I do slightly smaller loaves when I'm baking 10 loaves at a time because if I don't, I have had it to where the loaves will rise and touch the heating element in the stove and that was a messy situation. So that is how I bake large 10 to 12 loaf batches. Thank you for watching.